You want to see the face of a jerk? Look no further. It's right here. So I'm going to tell you 10 things I did as a kid that for sure made me a jerk. Okay, guys, welcome back to the junk room. We're going to, I haven't done a top 10 in a long time, so I've got 10 right here. 10 things I did as a kid, mostly as a teenager, that I thought was funny. That just makes me a jerk. Made me an a-hole. Just made people not like me. I don't, I don't know. Something about me still today, I like to be an instigator sometime. Uh, some of you know that already. And uh, I, let's just get on with this. And number 10 is something I would do. I would go into Blockbuster and... Sometimes I do it with my friends, sometimes I even do it alone. It's bad when you're a jerk all by yourself. You remember Blockbuster had a big old wall back there of new releases, and it was, they would leave new releases on there for months. Anyway, new releases, and on the behind the VHS tape, or DVD later, VHS tape uh, was the box that you could rent. So if the box was behind it, you take the box up to the counter and you can rent it. If there's no box behind it, it's all rented out. You can't rent it. If you go in there to get Like Father, Like Son, and there's no videotapes behind the box, you don't get it. It's out. You have to wait till somebody brings it back. Well, I would go over to the documentary section, music video section, or probably the worst movie I could find, and stick it behind the new release tapes that were empty. Because most of the time, people wouldn't look. Now, honestly, I don't know. I think Blockbuster always checked before they rented it out. But I didn't do this just at Blockbuster. I went to some of those local places, too. It just made me fun. It just seemed like fun to me. It just made me laugh thinking somebody got home <laughs> and they got a Debbie Gibson music videotape instead of that new movie they thought they was going to rent. <laughs> that's being an ass. That's, that's just being a jerk. I, I feel bad for it now. But at the time, didn't feel bad at all. So, here we go. Number nine. I would go to the arcade at the mall, Aladdin's Castle. You might have had another one. I had Showbiz. Didn't work at Showbiz, but I did do it at Aladdin's Castle. And I faked another one. I think me and my buddy Rush, you know Rush from the live stream, I think we did this in the 90s when we were in our 20s. But anyway, I would take a token. You would have to put a dollar in the machine, get the token and everything you wanted to play games. So I'd take Aladdin's Castle token, probably about two or three of them, and I would super glue them to the ground outside the mall, either right by the doorway or maybe right when you walk into the arcade or right before you get to the arcade. Uh, it's usually fun to do it right around the change machine because that's where people would drop their tokens. And I would just watch these little stupid kids try to pick it up, but it'd be super glued to the ground. <laughs> and and oh, I, I know a guy who worked there, so his manager really hated it because they would take them all day. They'd try to scrape them all up. I only do like one, maybe two. But it was fun. You see those kids, they're out of tokens, they can't play any more games. Oh, Mom, I want to play Dragon's Lair. But no, no, you can't. But there's a token. And they can't even pick it up. <laughs> oh, good times, good times. Hey, this is what we did before the internet, I guess. But good times, good times. Uh, number eight. Yeah, this, this is kind of mean. This is this is being a jerk for real. We would always set up ramps. We had this place in the woods. We would get a piece of board and put some bricks in it. We had about five, about four pieces of concrete bricks put under it so we could jump. I would put it up. I would jump. My friend Larry, he'd jump over. My friend Dale, jump over. My friend Boyd, jump over. But there was this one guy. I'm not going to even mention his name, although it was Bo Bentley. I'm not going to say who it is, but I would always loosen one of the bricks. That way when he hit that ramp, that brick would fall, the ramp would fall down, and he would hit that first brick and tumble over. <laughs> it was really funny. He'd cry and go home, chin me, blood be running down his chin one time, his tooth would lose. Yeah, my tooth would lose. But he would always come back a month later and try it again. So I guess, say, he must not have been too, too hurt. He kept trying to, he kept trying to, he kept trying to do it. Well, he kept trying to do it. There we go, there we go. Number seven? Eight. Sorry. This is, I remember doing this in high school. Now, back in Walmart days, they used to have these little stickers. They would put them like CDs and the, mov uh, uh, the movies and stuff and anything they didn't want stolen. So they would stick that little, it was like a little piece, of, it, was a little, it was a little rectangle uh, bar, like a barcode on it, and it would set the alarms off when you pass by. Boom, boom. So what I used to do, you could really just pick them off really easy. So I don't know what the deal was. You pick them off, you want to steal them. I would pick them off and stick them on my buddy's back, you know, walking out the door and be like, hey, we'll see you again at Walmart. And then he goes through the door. Beep, 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 beep. The alarms go off. <laughs> Managers come running, security guards come over, and they're like checking his pockets and everything. And he's you know, all 
junk kids at it again. He's like, oh, you got me. And we wouldn't even do it. we do it like old ladies and stuff, sticking it on the bottom of their shoe, put it on the ground so we know the old lady would step on it. I remember one time this guy in a wheelchair ran over one in his wheelchair and he got stuck on his wheel and he went out the thing and it was about to knock over the wheelchair there. It was so exciting when the alarms went off. <laughs> like I said, that's probably a jerk thing to do, but... It sure was fun. I am mean, not going to lie to you. If I saw one of those stickers today at Walmart, I'd probably do it just, you know, uh, just celebrate the old times, I guess, right there. Uh, number five? Yes, number five. This is, we had typing class at school, and I didn't take it seriously. Like, who, oh, I'm going to be a secretary? Why do I need to learn to type? We, none of the guys thought they needed to know how to type. Now, everybody types, right? Everybody types. But we, well, it was a, it was a, Typing class, but it's also a library class. So we did it on not on a typewriter, but on a on a computer. And you know, I wouldn't pay attention in class sometimes. So about ten minutes before the bell rang, I would take out my big pen or something and take the key, take one key out of the keyboard. And then once you get one key out, you could pop them all out. And I put them all in order, or sometimes a different order. Most time. Uh, in order, so the A's first, you know, like it should be, like, because when you first start typing, you're like, why are my keys right? Why, why is there an A over here and a G over here and a Q over there and a buggy over there? You just don't understand. So, so I just, I never knew what happened, but I just thought, oh, the next class is going to come in. Somebody's going to sit down. Their keyboard's going to be all screwed up. And what was really fun, what's really a jerk move was, when I would just take one or two out and swip them around. You know, take the S and the D and swap them, something really close together. The, oh, I bet they failed their final a couple of times all because of me. I hope. I was a jerk. And this one's really bad. And I only did this... Be honest with you, I only did this a couple of times, maybe once or twice, because I'm not one to go to a public bathroom, especially when I was a kid, to do a number two. But we had one, we had a build, we had high, it was junior high, and we had where the everybody had PE and everything, and we had this bathroom, it was kind of off by itself, so you could go there, you know, well, uh, you know, do your, do your stanky business while anybody bothering you. Well, me and my friend Red used to go in there, and he would watch the door, and I would do a double decker. Double decker. I think most of you know what a double decker is, but this is where you take the tank part, the lid off the tank part, where all the water's kept that flushes the toilet, and you take a big old poop right in it, and then put the top back on it. Nobody knows. They come in there and say, "Why is it? Why is it stinking here? Why is it stink? Why, what, what's going on? It's like somebody's shitting. There's no shit in the toilet." Oh, great time. I feel sorry for that janitor. Oh, cause one time my friend Red did, and he had. Diarrhea. Oh, I can just imagine. Then when you flush it, it just brown comes back. Oh, I bet that janitor quit his job that day. There we go. Number four. No, it's not. It's number three. I had a friend named Leonard. This was a good friend of mine. And he had, I talked about his sister before. She didn't like me. You Now you probably see why. Uh, he, had a, he had a brother. And his name was Terrence. And he was probably about eight or nine. We were about 13 or 14. He really went, looked up to us. He went, you know how it is when you got the older kids. You want to hang out and be cool. Well, I used to always tell him that if he took the magnets off his refrigerator and put them on the TV screen, I told him they didn't stick. But if he rubbed them around, you know, every day, every couple hours, it would make the picture look better. The quality would look better. You know how TVs look back then, but as anybody knows, don't put a magnet at a TV. And he'll be the one in the living room. He'd be in there rubbing magnets all around it. <laughs> Leonard would come in and say, why do you do that? I'm going to get my brother killed. My dad just paid over $3 million for that TV. Okay, it wasn't that much of it, but still. <laughs> it was funny to me. I was just... And I remember there was a little space, top right corner. I can still see it in my head. It was kind of warped and weird looking where he put a magnet and he kind of screwed it up. For, I wasn't, didn't mess the screen up too much, but... Oh, what a stupid kid. What is he? Is it my fault? If somebody falls for the stupid things? It's not my fault. Not my fault at all. So that leaves me at number two. And this was probably more sixth grade. I think it's about the only time I did sixth grade. Uh, I sat in the back of the room, and every morning they would have this boring intercom come on with them morning announcement. Kids, please stand for the pledge. I was like, no, I don't want to stand for your pledge. But we stand for the play. I pledge allegiance and all that stuff. And you know, then they do the morning announcement. Well, the day is Joseph Kennedy's birthday. He turns a whopping seven. I'm like we care. So what I would do that morning before I went to school or getting ready for school, I would take some bubble gum, start chewing. I would chew a lot of bubble gum. Usually big lead chew. That was the best one. It really stuck really good. So I would go up in the back of the room when the teacher wasn't there. 
uh, and take a big glob of bubble gum. I mean, I would chew so much bubble gum and I would just stick it on the intercom and smoosh it down and rub it around. And then the more announcement come on and be like, <laughs> he couldn't hear anything. It was great. And of course my teacher would say, who put gum on the intercom? And you know, by the sixth time, everybody knew it was me. So uh, I would end up having to scrape it off. So then the teacher turned into the jerk. I was a jerk and then she was a jerk making me clean it up and everything. She didn't find the humor in it. I don't understand people, they don't get jokes. Just don't get it. So, number one thing I did as a kid that made me a jerk, it's right here. Hey, oof. Ah, I almost hate to mention this one. We had a cripple kid named Ronnie. Ronnie the cripple kid. He was he was kind of slow every day. Not slow mentally, but he was handicapped. He had some braces on his legs or something. And I think my Sometimes he had braces on, like sometimes he's a wheelchair. I don't understand. Maybe he just didn't feel like putting his braces on. But he was always really, really slow at getting to the lunchroom because he had to take this service elevator or maintenance elevator or something that was in the back. We Nobody even knew the elevator was there and he didn't take the steps. So we get all down there and we all be, you know, having our lunch for about 10 minutes before he even gets there. Well, I knew that Robbie the cripple, and I said cripple, that's not bad. They say it in the Bible. Jesus, he'll be crippled, so it's not bad. Anyway, I knew. In his jacket pocket, he kept on the back of his seat, chair, whatever you want to call it, in the room, he kept his lunch ticket. Now, the poor kids got lunch tickets, the semi-poor kids got reduced lunch tickets, and the cool kids didn't buy lunch at all. They was like, we're too cool to eat lunch. But this, but sometimes we did eat lunch, because I was one of the cool, cool, thought I was too cool to eat lunch, unless it was square pizza day. And then I'd buy my own, but I would always take his ticket, <laughs> so I could get an extra ice cream. I'm usually a Mickey Mouse ice cream. Until my friend Broders always asks for the ear. No, it's a Mickey Mouse ice cream. I'm not giving you the ear. That's the best part. Oh, break off the ear. No, no one gives away a Mickey Mouse ear. But I feel so bad now. He used to take his lunch ticket and he'd come down there in the service elevator, roll up, and wouldn't be able to get no lunch. He's like, I'm hungry. And they're like, so where's your lunch ticket? I don't got it. We're too poor to buy the lunch. <laughs> And most of the time he would end up borrowing some, you know, uh, somebody's leftovers anyway, so he would get to eat. But I, I, I did it a couple of times, I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't feel bad then, I feel kind of bad now. But hey, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? It's his fault, he was late getting down there. Huh, if he was on time, I wouldn't have done it. And trust me, I wanted to eat. So I, I didn't have a lunch money because I didn't think I was going to eat. And then they said square pizza day. And I was like, well, I got to eat now. I didn't bring any money with me. So where's the harm? Where's the harm? I got to eat. So where's the, who, who got hurt by it? He got leftovers and I got to eat. So it was a win-win for everybody. Well, that's 10 things right there that made me a jerk back in the 80s or back when I was a kid and teenager. I didn't do these as an adult, but I've done my fair share of jerky shit as an adult. So tell me some bad things you did, bad things you've done that you kind of regret now as an adult or you look back and think, hey, it was y'all for fun. Hey, jump man yeah. channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.